My name is Keelan Patrick Burke, and this is as disgusting as it looks. Uh, what character would I play in Slime City? I play Corey, who is a deserter from the army. He comes to Buffalo Central Terminal with his girlfriend Alexa, played by Jennifer Beale. Um, looking for salvation, looking for some place to hide out, stay away from the authorities, and basically make a life for themselves, however temporary. And we, uh, we encounter Corey, I'm oh, sorry, Corey, we encounter Lee Perkins, who plays Mason, and Debbie Rashawn, who plays uh, <laughs> Alice. And we kind of, first there's a lot of tension, but we get together, kind of unite, and are further united by our addiction to the elixir. I knew Greg, Gregory Lamerson, the director, for years, through primarily through writing. And uh, we had been talking over and back. We'd never met, but we'd been talking through email. And he, I have to mention at one point, it's just nothing to do with the conversation that I had done some theater. And he thought, really? Well, um, would you like to take a look at this script? And it was a script for a different project that didn't see the light of day, but we had got to a point where I would have been playing a pretty a lead role in that. So when he decided to write the sequel to Slime City, he wrote a part for me, so which was great. And uh, I read the script and knew straight away I had to do it. This is my first time in a movie, any kind of movie. So it's a new experience for me. But they're completely different. I mean, for starters, writing is a very solitary pursuit. You spend an awful lot of time by yourself in a room, closed in. It could be six months that it takes you to write a novel, or a couple of weeks to write a short story. It, there's nobody involved but yourself, and it's very insular. So this is the flip side of that. On this movie, you're surrounded by people all the time. Whether you're on set or not, you have a lot of people that you get close to, a lot of friends, you work with some amazing talent. So it's a whole different experience, but I love both equally. And I would definitely do this again. My favorite scene, uh, there's a lot of them, but I think one from a strictly acting perspective was the standoff scene with Lee Perkins, Debbie and Jennifer, all four of us. I think it was, if I, if I remember correctly, it was the first day the four of us were on set together. Me and Jennifer had a couple of days of just our stuff and then Debbie Lee came on set and we did those scenes. But the standoff scene was particularly interesting from an acting perspective because we had to, it had to be a very tense action scene. And we all played off each other. It was the first time we were able to experience that dynamic, how well we all worked together and we played off each other and it was just that, that tension was tangible, which I think is exactly what Greg was looking for and what we wanted from the scene. So it was good. Um, <laughs> If you're going to ask me what my least favorite scene is, uh, I think that's obvious for anyone who's been anywhere remotely close to me over the last couple of weeks, it would have to be the slime sex, in which case I felt like I'd been dumped into cold Vaseline and with the lid put on and left there for about 16 hours. Working with Debbie Rashawn was, uh, was an eye-opening experience for me. It's, um, and the same with Lee. It's always great, particularly coming from strictly amateur theater and Shakespearean stuff too to work on a set with people of just that capability that have been doing it so long that the minute they open their mouths and start saying their lines, they are that character and it's effortless. They switch it on and they switch it off. It was awe-inspiring and to just watch them do what, they, what they're known for and what they're really good at. But off the set, it was, um, was even better because they're you know, you expect sometimes to come onto sets and find huge egos, people who have earned enough credits that they feel that they've earned more right than anyone else too. And nothing could have been further from the truth on this. Debbie and Lee were both. There are stories, they may make it onto the DVD, they may not, but uh, sooner or later I'm sure they'll come out about cherries and rabbits. <laughs> we'll talk about that some other time. So it was great, basically, the experience is, is I'll take it with me forever, it was priceless. Oh, this is put me on a spot. Slime is Slime City or Slime City Massacre better? Well, I think they're different animals. I think Slime City was a product of its time. Uh, it's it's a very very amusing, very very entertaining movie. But I think, and this was intentional on Greg's part, that he wanted to make a different movie with the same mythology, just a lot of action, a uh, lot more gore, 
nudity, everything. He just wanted to ramp everything up to make a different kind of movie, but with that same premise from the first one running through it. So it's like what, what it kind of puts me in mind of is Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, where they're essentially the same movie, just with a bigger budget. Even though he's got the same budget on this one, I think he's got a whole different, he's got a whole different angle on it, and he's utilized a lot, a lot of local talent, and it shows there's, there's some amazing talent in this town. And he's brought them all together, and it's going to show, I think, in the finished product. It's, it's a different creature entirely, but I don't think it is... It can be watched without seeing the first one, but I think the ultimate viewing experience would be to watch one after the other. I can't wait to get this fucking makeup off. <laughs> <laughs>